Oh, how would you put it? I'd say we're both men with many interests to take care of. We can't afford to waste time. Now, if this is the coin I want, I'll stay, and I'll bid on it, and I'll give you top dollar. It's as simple as that. And if I refuse? Well, you shouldn't. It's in your interest for me to stay. For a man of such expertise, Mr. Bishop, you remain somewhat of a mystery. A mystery? Uh, I don't understand. No, it's quite simple. I've never heard of you. Why is that? Pewter knows the rest. All except one. I like to keep a low profile. Work through intermediaries. Uh, and perhaps you could tell me... Perhaps you could just stop wasting my time. Now, are you going to show me the coin? Do you like puzzles, Mr. Bishop? What does that have to do with the coin? Everything and nothing, as you will see. Boxes like these date from the second century, at least. They hold many surprises, which reveal themselves only to those people who are clever enough to unravel their secrets. Get simple. Eighteen ninety seven double eagle. Denver Mint Packet Reserve motto over the eagle. And there's a touch of wear over Liberty's crown. It's almost nothing. It's virtually uncirculated. What's your price? The bidding will start at 100,000. Dollars, that is. Speaking. Mr. Vermeer, the name's Sean O'Brien, and we have a mutual friend, Ike Slattery. Yeah, well, I have another coin from the same collection. How very interesting. Well, I thought we might talk about it. You see, I joined the cruise in NASA so I could meet you. Did you? Or do you want to sell it? For the right price, I. Now, just a moment. I think you got what you wanted, Mr. Bishop. Yeah. Yeah. Until the auction. Until the auction. Shall we discuss the matter, Mr. O'Brien? Good. I'll be on the deck outside the casino, then. On deck? Uh, what time? When the casino closes. Well, why not here in my suite? I prefer to be more discreet. Well, I can assure you it's perfectly safe. Well, in our profession, nothing is sure. I mean, I've got my interests to protect, you see. I understand. Well, then you agree? Of course. Uh, you'll bring the coin. Of course. Good. Then I'll meet you on deck this evening as soon as the casino closes. Aye, Mr. Vermeer. I'll be looking forward to it. No, quattro cinque, sei, quattro cinque, due, otto, zero. Grazie. Hello, Richie. Yeah, the trip is going fine. Listen, I want you to run a check on someone I've met here on board. His name is Daniel Bishop. He claims to be a power in the trucking industry, but I've never heard of him. I want you to do a complete rundown. His name is Daniel Bishop. B-I-S-H-O-P, Daniel. Yes. Well, put everything else aside. Make this your number one priority and call me here on board when you've got some answers. I'll talk to you later. Why the down in Broad Street on Bishop? My instincts tell me that there's more to Mr. Bishop than meets the eye. Yes. Not tonight. But it's a wonderful disco. You go if you want to. I went down there and it was great, though. No. I have to see a man about a coin. Mr. Vermeer. 
me. You're very prompt, Mr. O'Brien. Beautiful, isn't she? Not bad. Not bad at all. Well, I'd be looking for a fast cash deal. Would you be interested now? Liking now. Yes, yeah, so I shall decide that for myself. Yes. Well, as you can see, it is from the same series as yours. As I can see. And of course, it's uh, mint condition. You may dispense with the running commentary. Yes. Well, uh, what do you think? I don't think, I know. It is indeed an S dollar with the correct mintage. Well, it means you're interested in it. It means, Mr. O'Brien, that you have a coin that you're eager to part with. Eager now? Well, perhaps for the right price. I should say that you're desperate to sell. Well, I'd say I have a very valuable coin here. <laughs> Are we not sitting in the shadows at midnight, Mr. O'Brien? Yes, well, there are reasons for that sort You're of thing. You're a desperate man, and I am a very rich one. All right. What do you think it's worth? What it is worth is in excess of $100,000. What I will give you is $10,000. Well, surely there's room for negotiation here. No, I'm sure there's not. The offer stands firm at $10,000. Take it or leave it. You have... Exactly one minute in which to decide. There's no question as to the price. Well, Your answer. I'm sure we could compromise. Yes or no. But you said yourself that the coin was worth ten times that price. I also said that you're a desperate man, and desperate men do desperate things. Like selling a coin for the tenth of its value. Look, why don't we say 50? Now, that's half the fair market value. Huh? You may say 50, but I am offering 10. Look, I wish there was something I could say to help change your mind. Well, if you don't give me an answer, I may very well change my mind. Well, good. I'd like to hear that. Your time has expired, Mr. O'Brien. I have decided not to buy your coin. Mr. Romay, wait. Uh... Your hand, Mr. O'Brien. Remove it or I'll break your wrist. Look, I just wanted to say that, uh, uh... I'll sell it to you for 10000 Of course you will. It's just one thing, though. No more bargaining, Mr. O'Brien. No, no bargaining. I'd just appreciate it if you didn't mention this to anyone, okay? Agreed. I have interest to protect as well. Oh, I'd like to tell you one more thing. I don't appreciate Ike Slattery giving my name out. Oh, well, you don't have to worry about me. I mean, I'm not going to say a word. But for your own sake, I hope that's true. You can count on it. What exactly is the nature of your acquaintance with Mr. Slattery? Well, I've uh, hired him to work for me in a couple of projects from time to time. Now, what sort of projects? Listen, that. Are you being deliberately vague, Mr. O'Brien? Well, I dare say you'd be the same with me if I asked you what he'd done for you, huh? Possibly. Mr. Vermeer. Yes. Uh, Mr. Vermeer, I hope you don't think it presumptuous of me to inquire, but uh, I was wondering if you'd take time to think about the mutual ven benefits we might accrue for each other if we were to, say, be... Uh, partners on any project that might come along? There is no project that might come along, Mr. O'Brien, that I couldn't handle more intelligently and more skillfully alone. But thank you all the same. Well, if you were to change your mind, it all. Good night, Mr. O'Brien. And the top of the morning to you.
wonder if I could have a walk. I, uh, I had some work to take care of. Oh, did you? Yeah, I was in my cabin all night. Well, then you don't know. Well, I don't know what. An intruder broke into my suite. Well, uh, did you catch him? No, uh, Miss Andre scared him away, though. The hazards of our profession, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah, well, I, uh, I've had my fair share run in with, uh, with burglars myself. Well, here's some information that uh, will interest you. I've acquired another coin from the same series. Another coin? Uh, well, uh, when did you acquire it? Last night, from a fellow passenger. I see. Well, uh, you're going to be selling this with the other coin? Yes, I shall be offering them both at the auction this afternoon. I'm curious. Uh, could you tell me who sold you this other coin? Yes, uh, I'm afraid the information is privileged. Ah, well, I'm just interested in meeting somebody with similar taste. I'm sorry. Well, is he an American collector? Ah, uh, the quality of persistence. It has its place, Mr. Bishop, but not here. And now, if you will excuse us, Miss Andre is famished after her last night's ordeal. Oh. Maurice. Another coin collector, huh? It's gotta be Montgomery. Yeah. Who knew it was in our room? Well, Daniel Bishop, for one. He expressed great interest in it. He saw exactly where I put it. And he was also very upset when I wouldn't sell it to him before the auction. We may have our man right there. Except for one thing. What's that? Bishop has a beer. The man who broke in didn't. Are you certain of that? I'm positive. I was as close to him as we are now. Well, that rules out Daniel Bishop. Pity. Now we'll just have to look elsewhere for our thief. I'm sorry I let the thief get away, Maurice. Well, you prevented him from stealing the coin, and that's the main thing. You're not of the first rank as a bodyguard, Michelle, even with your physical prowess. But you're talented in other respects, so I'm satisfied. Then you'll keep me on? Well, as long as you continue to acquit yourself with honors in our nocturnal escapades. Well, I intend to try. Well, I have every confidence. More wine? Thank you. This has been a very profitable cruise. My meeting with the Peruvians turned out to be very successful. And the coin should bring at least a quarter of a million dollars at the auction. I'm surprised you're selling them. Don't tell me you need the money. <laughs> hardly. I hardly need the coin. I make no attachments to the things I collect, Michelle. When they cease to amuse me, I let them go. Why don't we go upstairs to the suite? There's plenty of time before the auction. Did you bring the... Of course. Well, then why don't we go and see if you still amuse me? 41. 41. Can I have a bit of 41? 42, 42, 43, 43, 45. Are you all done? Are there any more bidders? Going once, going twice, sold to the gentleman in the third row. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the highlight of today's auction. Two coins from the collection of Maurice Verme. The, uh, these coins are the two gem brilliant uncirculated S. Morgan coins, dated 1897 and 1899. We will open the bidding at 100,000. 100, 105. 105, can I have a bit of 110? 110, can I have 115, 120? 125, 125, thank you, sir. Have 130, can I have 135? 135, do I hear 140? 150, 150, 200,000 is the bid. Okay.